Hey, this is MJ, call sign KW3KW, and welcome to another episode of Ham Radio Made Simple. I'm going to show you my FT891 Go Box with the FC50 uh, uh, Yesu tuner built in. And it's a fast portable setup. I can actually now deploy my setup in five minutes or less. And that includes the antenna, but it doesn't include the table and chair. So if you have a park bench, it's five minutes. So this is episode 49, and I appreciate you guys hitting the like and the subscribe uh, buttons. It helps others find this channel. Also, if you can tell me what, uh, if you have a portable box, what is your setup? And what did I do right? What did I do wrong? So I really look forward to your feedback. So I'm going to go over the goal and what I was trying to create with, it, with my Go Box, because everyone has a different goal for it. I'll start off and show you the finished box first, and then I'll get into the construction, the parts, the price, the full setup, showing it in a working environment, and do a quick summary. So my goal was to take my FT891 with my FC50 tuner that you see right in here, and my DigiRig, which is the older version, be able to do a setup on under five minutes. And so I want it to be portable, lightweight. I want to be able to do digital and voice. And so I need fast connections to my antenna, my laptop, and my power box. And you can see right in here. And this is my power box that I have in here. And this is the ports I'd go in on the Anderson power poles. So I also want to future-proof this. So I didn't want to build the laptop into the box because if that, I have to replace it. If I don't get the same size, it could mess things up. So I want it to be agnostic. And I want to be able to use multiple power sources, just not my box. So that's why the Anderson power pole connector works perfectly. Also, again, to future-proof this, I want to be do exchangeable pieces. Like I mentioned, laptop agnostic. So it doesn't matter which laptop because I have multiple laptops. And, it, and they're all lightweight. Uh, power agnostic so that uh, I can use my battery box, I can use the car battery direct connect, uh, which I actually have a, an Anderson power pole line from the battery itself into uh, inside so that, you know, I obviously can do a mobile setup, but I can just plug right into that if I wanted to use my car battery, or I can use my shack power setup. Also, different antennas, so I have an Alpha Vertical and also the Yaesu ATOS 120A. Another major goal was to be able to use two rigs at once in my shack. So now I can take my portable box up to my shack. And since I have two HF wires in the shack with actually three antennas, I can operate two radios independently at the same time. So I have a remote antenna switch. One HF wire is dedicated to my magnetic baby loop antenna. The other two will go through my antenna box, my off-center fed dipole, which is 40 meters and less, and my end fed half wave, I can use, uh, I can add 60, 80, and sometimes 160 uh, meters on this one. And I'm also power agnostic, so now I can just also, whether if I wanted to use my battery up here, but I can now also use my rig runner and just plug it into one of the extra ports right underneath my desk. Very simple and fast. Now I'm giving you a, a lot of information and, and you're gonna wonder how you get all this, you know, to be able to know exactly what I did. Well, just ask for the Go Box handout and email me at kw3kw at mail.com. So this is what the finished box looks like. This is the FT891 on top with the uh, FC50 tuner underneath. Here is the head on a Lido mount. Now, this is an older model they don't make anymore. It's a suction cup. But I show an alternative one that you can use in, uh, here in a few slides. Um, here's the microphone connected and through the ports on the side right in here. This is where I connect to my PC and I have uh, mounts over here. My antenna is over here and um, over on the, this side is the power uh, uh, connection over here. Now I have a USB hub. I tried because I thought I could be able to take the two uh, digi rig that you see here Velcro on and that's really tight. Um, the two wires in, go through a USB hub extender and only have to have one USB port coming out, but it didn't work, so I had to put an extra one in. But I did able to use my mouse dongle that I put in here, so you don't need this. That's a trial and error. Um, after I put it in, uh, you can also notice I, um, I put in a lot of uh, ways to reduce the tension and tightness on the wires in the ports so that they're not being pulled or bent. So I use these uh, 3M uh, self-adhesive wire clips as well as the 90-degree uh, elbows to, uh, to make it so that the wires are not being tightly pulled and, uh, and protecting the integrity of each of these ports. Um, anything else in here? I think that's pretty much what it looks like, but let's go into more detail now. So again, the finished box, 
You can see where the suction cup mount is, the digi rig is. These are the side ports. So on one side, here's my antenna connect that goes in here, and here's my Henderson power pole. And on the other side, I have the USB uh, ports that go to my PC. So this is what my gear looks like. Uh, you just add your own antenna in here. That's all I need. And because of this box has my battery in it, it also has my uh, Rig 600 Expert, Rig Expert 600 uh, antenna analyzer and other cables and stuff that I have in here. Laptop and my uh, ant um, antenna wire, uh, the coax is also built in here. So this is pretty much everything I need and I have a lot of additional accessories all being carried and I can do it in one trip. First thing we want to get is the box and you can get it on Amazon for 50 bucks. And again, all the parts, is, everything is in the handout. So ask for the handout. Um, it is uh, 16 by five by 13 by seven inches. It is, they claim it's waterproof. I'm not going to find out. Um, it does have strong latches. I love the yellow so that I can see it. And it has two layers of foam, one layer being cubes where you can punch those out for customization of anything you put around it. Uh, the mounting board is a piece of wood I had laying around the house. You probably can go to Home Depot to get it or Lowe's um, uh, on their project boards. Uh, it's 10 inch by 14 by a quarter inch. And what I also have in here is a riser strips. This allows the distance to get your fingers under these. These are finger holes to pull it off. The Velcro is going to go on here to mount to the bottom of the box to hold it in. Your Velcro straps are going to go around here to hold down the unit, the FT891. And with mine is the FC50. Uh, tutor that's in there so I can fit all of that in um, I have the older version of the digi rig so it does require two two USB ports uh, in order to connect to my laptop on the side of the box the newer versions only require one USB port on the side of the box so if we look at the Anderson power pole connector that you see right in here it does come with the two clips which you will use on the next slide I'll show you where you're going to use those but that's mounted on the side of the box and uh, the uh, 239 bulkhead panel that you see in here is also on the side of the box. The two USB pass-throughs are over on the left side of the box. And uh, you only need one if you have the newer digi rig. But for the older digi rig, it requires the two. And the Lido head mount. This is the newer version of other than the suction cup. And you can secure these down by screwing or uh, actually you can probably put the uh, bolts in if they're uh, not too long. Uh, and it's an easier way, longer term fix than just trying to screw them down with wood screws. Uh, you're going to need the, the PowerWorks Fuse power pole connectors. I put this in to add extra protection that you see in here, and that, that goes in. I cut these off up here, and I used the clips and just plugged it into the uh, Anderson uh, uh, connector pass-through. 24-inch uh, Velcro straps, if you're using a tuner, like my uh, F FC50 Yesu tuner, I required the 24-inch. So these are the 24 inch. The shorter ones in here will probably work if you don't if you're just doing the radio alone. So that's why it's nice to buy something like this because then there's different sizes and one of those sizes should work for your setup. Now you have short cables and connectors in there, and that's why you want to put in these uh, adhesive cable clips that you saw in there. And it's going to secure your your rig cables, the power, the digi rig cables, the data cables, etc. Keeps it clean and keeps the torque off of the uh, uh, connection ports in the back of the rig. Also going to need a Velcro, Velcro adhesive. Uh, we happen to have this at home. My son had it, so I just cut a couple pieces. But if you don't have it, this is what you can use. The drill uh, bits uh, for the box cutout for 13 bucks. you're going to use like three of the five uh, that I used. The PL259 right angle adapters are great to put to take, again, the tension and the torque off of where you're having your cables go into the back, your, especially your antenna cables, from your tuner to your rig uh, or out to the box. Um, I use a 90 degree um, uh, left and right angle USB. They're male to female expansion adapters. Uh, again, what I'm trying to do when it goes into the USB uh, 232 port through the back, it allows it to be able to take the, the torque and the tension off of it. Um, USB cables to your laptop, if you don't have them, you're going to need spray paint. Uh, like I had white laying around that was like a semi gloss, you don't want a flat. Uh, then I used uh, two uh, clear coat can spray, sandpaper, and alcohol to wipe everything down and have it clean so that the Velcro would stick really well, and that's important. So when we look at the construction on the baseboard front, this is what it looks like, and here are the different dimensions that you can see in here. So this is where the, the Velcro strap slots went in. 
So you're going to go five and a quarter inch and then uh, recess in a three and a, three and a half inch for the Velcro strap so it doesn't slide. And then again, five and a quarter inch, you're going to cut a half inch hole. And again, it's three and a half inches wide. And that's where the Velcro straps are secured going in here so it's not going to slide around. Um, and the end to the uh, of the right in here is uh, uh, eight and three quarter inches. And it's three and one eighth inch from the from the front. So this is the back. This is the, the front closest to you when you open the box. I did rounded corners. I did finger holes so it's easy to take in and out. Uh, again, painted, sanded, and clear coated, wiped clean with alcohol. And so everything works really well with it. Now, on the baseboard back, um, if you look at it, what I did is I, I took, this is where the Velcro strips actually go in. So this has to be smooth. Don't uh, cheat on this because you're only as good as the surface that you put in the Velcro on. So you want to make sure this is a sanded uh, and uh, alcohol wipe to get all the debris off of it. So the Velcro adhesive sticks really good to it. This is what it looks like where you can put more Velcro. You can put the whole strip if you want on there, but I guarantee it's going to be really hard to get out. Um, but this is how the, the, the straps go. Now, you'll notice on the next slide I'll show you here, this is, uh, these two are going one direction, and I went the opposite so that it countered the pull so everything's not being, the equipment secure is not being pulled in one direction. So Velcro to the bottom of the box, and it's uh, it's not you don't have to do as much as you think. So well, again, whatever you feel comfortable with. So when you look at the assembly on this, the radio and the tuner is going to use the three twenty four inch Velcro strips. If you're just doing the radio itself, you may find you can use uh, the, like an eighteen inch or sh something shorter. Uh, connected wires, um, you can see the clips secure all the wires. I put them all through in here. And here, as you can see, where the 90-degree USB connector is. So, again, it doesn't do a sharp turn and bend into it. Again, take as much tension off of the, the port connectors and save yourself grief down the road. You can see the attached head that goes right in here. And this is where uh, my, my suction cup is. And I put foam around all of this to kind of hold it into place and cover up some of the wires. You can see I did a pilot hole when I... Uh, when I did the side holes, so I pre-drilled the pilot hole, and then that was a lot easier so you don't get the thing skipping around when you're using the foster bits that I showed you, the, the pack of five. So this is what it looks like set, set up. Again, it took me five minutes to tear it down and stuff. Here's my antenna, the cable going into the side, my Anderson power pole going right into the box, my laptop and antenna wire was in my backpack, my computer was in there. Uh, I have additional my battery box as well as my um, uh, Rig Expert 600 antenna analyzers and cables, and this cable all fits right in here. So with my laptop set up, I have the, the I have two wires going over to the side of the box. So again, you can see a, a little different view going in. And I run what I really like is with FL Rig, I don't have to ever really touch this. I can change the frequencies. I can do all the controls without having to stand up from my chair and, and mess with the rig. Once it's connected to FL rig, all of my work is done right in here. I don't have to go in here to do it all. And here's the sides. You can see my USB cables going into the side right in here. And so I can do digital or voice. And there is a, a stake uh, going in with my uh, alpha antenna vertical. So in summary, I wanted to create something lightweight and portable and I can tear down and set up in less than five minutes, exception of the chair and table. <laughs> uh, it's PC agnostic, it's future proof. Uh, they, I have a handout with the parts list and measurements and links to where to get all the stuff. So if you've enjoyed this, I really would appreciate it if you hit the like and the subscribe and give me your thoughts and comments on, again, what you're doing and what I could probably do better. Again, uh, this is MJKW3KW with Ham Radio Made Simple, thanking you all for watching this video, and good luck, and let me know how your setup works out for you. So, this is MJ, out.